Hi, it's Chrissy again. I'm here for part three of the new parent brief for the return and reunion curriculum. So the nine to 12 month old, um, this child may or may not be walking. And if they are not walking, that doesn't mean that they're behind. I had a child who walked at 10 months. I had a child who walked closer to 13 or 14 months. And then I've seen much later. Um, and that's that's just the way kids are sometimes. Um, my son's child, my son's kindergarten teacher actually talked about um, children's development is like little fish in the in in a school and you know sometimes the fish will be really far ahead of the other ones and this one's trailing behind but then you'll see like if over time this fish will be really t ahead and then maybe later they're swimming side by side and then maybe later one drops out for a little while but then it catches up so think about this with your child's development some parents get very upset if they don't see their child fitting into the box that they feel like they should be in developmental wise. If you're concerned about it, just provide your, ask your doctor and see if you can provide some other opportunities for them to stand up or, or, um, or crawl or talk or whatever. Um, and, and be concerned, but um, aware, but don't let it overtake you because children's development is not linear and um, comes at an exact time. So think too, they can be crawling and walking everywhere before around like nine to 10 months, 11 months, you, your children might be doing what they call cruising, which means that they will grab onto like the couch and then they'll move along, but they wanna like, they wanna stabilize themselves. Uh, my children also used to do like these big deep squats, like all the way to the ground and then all the way back up right before they walked. Um, it was an exciting time. Um, they'll play with toys for a more sustained period of time. They'll become very, um, excited and exploring their their uh, environment this way they might put a few words together at this age but maybe not um, maybe something like dada go or um, uh, baby sleep or something like that very very small words together um, they can be affectionate at this age they can also be um, not affectionate they can hit too at this age so think too um, my and this is where gender differences can matter too sometimes depending um, sometimes uh, my boys would sometimes show affection by being a little uh, aggressive. Um, so they would sometimes hit or bite or kick. Um, and then we wanted to really just show them like general affection during that time. They'll imitate others and they might feel happy, mad or sad. So a bigger gamut of emotion. Um, so this one here, I want to kind of tell you a little um, personal story about imitating others. Think too about what behaviors, words, um, actions, emotions that you want your child to display and start displaying those for your children as well. Um, so I mentioned that my one of my sons could bite hard enough to draw blood. Well, <laughs> when I brought it up with his doctor, he just actually mentioned something. He goes, do you play biting games with him? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, do you know what I mean? Like when you grab and you go like, I'm gonna eat you. And I was like, oh yeah, we do that. You know, like I'm gonna eat you you know, people playing like that, right? And he said, did you ever think that maybe that's what he was doing to you when he bit you? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so we stopped playing biting games because I didn't like having scars from biting. Um, but think too, you know, maybe some of the behaviors your child might see you doing and what they might emulate later. Like for example, I might be on this phone a lot when I'm at home because I have to pay bills and I have to communicate with someone or maybe I'm working from home right now during COVID-19. Your child will want to imitate your behavior and that's not a bad thing. That is them trying to explore their environment. So what I would say too is, you know, hey, you can't actually get on this computer. This is our computer. Um, you can't be on this phone. This is our phone. Um, but let me find something for you that has buttons, something that you can push around, something that you can play with. So find something that would be developmentally appropriate for them. So um, the other thing too, I remember uh, I was having a conversation in a group of mothers and um, there was a developmental psychologist there and we had a, there was a mother whose daughter climbed, like she would scale walls basically. The daughter just climbed all the time and she was like, I just tell her all the time, stop climbing, get off of the furniture. I told you not to get on the table. And the developmental psychologist that was with the group said, but climbing is something we want her to learn, right? And the mother was like, 
Yes, but I don't want her doing it in the house. She said, okay, so we need to just find a way for her to get that energy out and for her to learn that skill in a safe environment. So think, you know, again, this is hard because we don't have these options, playgrounds, um, slides, things that your child can developmentally um, progress, but in a safe way. So just use your creativity and your imagination. And again, reach out, new parent support, you know, call someone at Life Skills at, um, who teaches, you know, things like active duty pregnancy. Those people will know, okay? You can call me. <laughs> All right, so bonding with your baby. Go slow, give it time. If your child's crying when you're around, that doesn't mean that it will stay that way. That doesn't mean it will always be that way. Um, just continue thinking that small interactions will lead to large um, changes later. New sounds and new smells are scary. There's a great book that Military One Source um, has, and you can get those for free, by the way. You know you can go to their shop, put things in your cart, and they'll ship it to you for free. Um, there's a new one on homecoming that talks to them about how dad's presence is so big. His voice is booming. Um, I'm used to mom who's small and short and has a sweet voice, but dad is so big. He's almost scary to me. So think too that, that sometimes these changes can be really um, unsettling. And just any changes within the household. Children are emotional thermometers. They will sense any tension, any upset, any changes in energy or vibration in the house, they will feel it and they will take it on. I noticed most of the times when my children's um, emotions were really hard to handle, it was also because I was having um, something else happen to, in my life. And they were just taking on all of that anxiety, angst, sadness. Um, so remember that as well. Um, your partner, whoever is your other your child's caregiver work with them, appreciate what they've done, um, and offer to help. A very big phrase, one of the most important phrases you can bring home is how can I help? How can I help in this current situation? Try and have a lot of um, fun together, try and relax, let things be the way they are. Lower your expectations for the way you and your child interact at first. Um, don't expect for you to be able to swoop in and do everything all at once. Maybe that'll happen. But if you just have, you know, a really great bath time with your child and then the rest of the time they're screaming, um, you're not the only one. That's normal for some people. Um, but realize that in the moments that you have that are really nice, just take stock in those and express gratitude for those and realize the other good moments will come with time. So smile and use soothing tones. So even when your child's upset, try and portray, you know, hey, I'm here for you. I'm not gonna leave you. Um, I Everything's going to be fine. We'll get you what you need, those kind of things. And expect there to be crying. That is normal, okay? I say in my classes, there are people whose babies cry and the rest are liars. They are all lying, okay? So I don't want to hear any of it. Babies, all babies cry, okay? Some more than others, maybe, but all babies cry. So think too about your baby's needs and scheduling. This is another thing with COVID-19 that's been a little unsettling is that sometimes there have been shortages at grocery stores. Um, like for example, I could place an order on Amazon and it might show up in two days, but I've put in orders that haven't shown up for a week and a half. Um, and then I've gone to the grocery store sometimes and not been able to get essential items. So this can be really upsetting for new parents if you can't get the diapers you need, the formula you need, the wipes, um, medicine that a child might need. So consider ways that you can help now or when you get back to make sure that your, um, your baby has their essential items. But babies will change every part of your schedule and every portion of your life. And that is just one of the yin and yangs of parenthood. Um, and let's talk more about mom's body and accepting that change in the next video.